Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing really well. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play and make up your own Motown bass lines. And it's based around this very simple chord progression. You've got four chords here, C major 7, A minor 7, D minor 7, and G7. You can download this backing track and the PDF below. The first thing to know is what key you're in. So we're in the key of C major. It's just the scale here. And one really simple thing you can do is to try and connect the notes of the different chords just using notes from a scale. This is this will sound not great, but just to illustrate a point. We've got two bars of C. I'm just going to walk down to an A. A chord. Just connecting the dots, connecting the chords, using notes from a scale. That's really important. Each of the chords um, is made up of chord tones. Now, a piano player or a guitarist would play them as chords. You as a bass player need to know what notes form a chord so you have more options. So over the C, very simple C major arpeggio. Over the minor, A minor arpeggio. Same on D minor. And then G. G7, we're just using the root, the third and the fifth each time here. And you don't have to use all those notes, but let's let's do that approach now. So you know what? I'm probably just going to use roots and fifths and the odd third. Okay, there, look. A C and a G. That's the root, the C. The G is a fifth. And I actually did a video on this before. You may have seen this. If not, I'll link to it. Of using this exact same chord progression and just using roots and fifths. Um, an octave is the same note as a root, so I was using that as well. And notice that those notes are contained within an arpeggio. We've got a root, a third, fifth, and an octave. You can just use those notes alone. Using the minor third there over the A minor chord. You need to know these patterns. That was three different shapes of exactly the same thing. So it doesn't matter where my hand is, I know where these notes are. And you don't want to be restricted to one area. As you can hear, James Jameson, this is where I got all these ideas from him. I'm using rhythms that he would use, sort of syncopated, interesting rhythms. And notice that if you take, in this case, an authentic sort of Motown rhythm where you're doing 16th notes, uh, making them a little bit syncopated so not all on the beat. If you take that authentic rhythm and apply it to these notes, it sounds sounds good, doesn't it? So you've got your rhythm and you've got your note selection. You need to make sure that you're, you're working on both constantly until it comes to the point where you know where they all are and you're feeling the rhythms. So it's another good pattern. And this works for soul bass playing, and you hear this a lot, where you have your root. If you're on the A string, it's a really handy pattern. You drop down to the same fret on the E string, and you have your fifth. And two frets across from that note. You've got your major sixth. Common soul bass pattern. So let's do that over the major chords, and then I'll go to the minor and I'll use this pattern. Again, very, very common. We've got the root, two across, one down to the fifth of the chord. That's the minor seven, it's on the same fret as the root, two strings down, and you've got your octave. So we'll use the, the root, fifth, major, sixth pattern for the major chords and this root, fifth, minor, seven octave pattern for the minor chords. And these notes sound really great. When I got to the G, as I was playing that, I realized that if I start it on the E string, there's nowhere to go. I can't do the same pattern. So if you're on the fifth fret of the D string, you can do that same pattern as I did before. 
But if you're on the E string like I was there, I was like, ah, oh, I'm in the wrong place. You can still do a root on the third fret of the E string. Your sixth is now on the second fret of the D string. And your fifth is two frets across one string up as it normally would be. And you'll find that when you study harmony and you, you play scales, you'll, you'll, you'll know these patterns. You know, we, we are talking roots, fifths, sixths, they're used all the time. Another thing James Jameson used to do a lot was to, uh, he was basically a jazz player before, and getting into the next chord chromatically. So like, so you just approach the, whatever chord you're going to from either a semitone below or above, and, you, and that's kind of instant jazz. Because they sound wrong, but they sound so right as well. So let's do, the, I'm gonna do the same pattern as before, and this time maybe link up the notes of the chords in a little bit more of a, a sort of smoother way. See there? Just going A, B, C, all notes in the scale. Carry on. That leads nicely to the D. Exactly the same movement, D, E, F. That's from the scale. Leads nicely to the G. Okay, so hopefully this is giving you a few ideas. I mean, I, I could go on and on and on, and I'm not. <laughs> You'll be glad to know. But there is one more idea I just maybe want to show you here. We're in the key of C. The G7 is the five chord. And this is just something that's just harmony. It's just, it's the law. It works. Okay, so we've got C major. The fifth note in the C major scale is G. And the five chord, the note built on the five chord is the G7, that's this chord here. If we start C major from G, we get G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's a G mixolydian mode. So each of these chords comes from a scale or mode, okay? Did a lesson on this, I'll put a link to it. And if you know that, then you can start to embellish even further. This is the two chord, Dorian. Dorian mode works over there. I don't know if James Jameson would have known this exactly. You don't necessarily, this is just the way I think. It just, you know, it's quite a theory analytical way of looking at it, but you learn it once and you find this applies all the time. So it works for me. See how those notes fit directly and easily over the G7 chord? It might be too much to play them all, but if you know what your note choices are, you're gonna be able to come up with bass lines far more easily. I'll leave you with one more idea, which works really well, which is using the pentatonic over whatever chord you're on. So if you're in a major chord, you use major pentatonic, minor chord, minor pentatonic. Here's a good shape. So I'm on the C, third fret of the A string. Again, another soul sort of rock and roll pattern, really. But we've got fret three, five, and seven of the A string, and five, seven on the D. That's the major pentatonic. And I like it because you can slide from the second to the third note, so that's pattern. And you can go chromatically to the A. The last note in the scale is an A, and that's the chord we're about to go to, right? So it's all about connecting up the notes um, in, a, in a pleasing musical way. A minor pentatonic works. D minor pentatonic, and I'm really wanting to use that chromatic idea again. And that's just G major pentatonic. So there, I was just sort of piecing together as many of those ideas as I could. And it really is to do with, with the marriage of those notes to interesting rhythms. And I 
don't think you can do any better than really studying James Jameson. He was a jazz player, so he was improvising a lot of these rhythms, as I am now, and you can do too. Once you once you have internalised a few syncopated 16th note rhythms, a bit of a mouthful there, but once you do that, you'll, you'll be able to call upon this and lay those rhythms over these patterns. And I don't want to make this look like it's some sort of like formula. You just learn that, learn that, and bang. Because at the end of the day, it's creativity. But certainly you do have to have these ideas under your fingers and deeply ingrained in your, in your brain. And the more that you do this, you know, do these kind of ideas every day, the more that it becomes less um, cerebral and intellectual and more just automatic. And when it comes to that point, you'll be very, very easily making up bass lines in all different styles. So I hope you got something from that. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, please do subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.